Training module 4.3 Crop Development. This slide gives a schematic overview of the calculation scheme of AquaCrop. Crop yield is simulated in four steps. Step 1 Green canopy cover. Step 2 Crop transpiration. Step 3 Biomass production. Step 4 Crop yield. Each of those processes can be affected by water stress and temperature stress. In a series of four training modules, we are going to focus on each process individually. In this module, we focus on the simulation of green canopy cover. The learning objective of this slide is to understand how AquaCrop simulates crop development. We will explain the concept of green canopy cover and subsequently how canopy development and the expansion of the root zone develop under non-limiting and water stress conditions. A lot of models use the leaf area index and the leaf area index considers the upper surface of each of the leaves and they express that per unit ground surface. So it varies from zero to four, five, six, depending how well the canopy is developed. Most models use leaf area index. In AquaCrop, we don't use leaf area index. We use the green canopy cover. And the green canopy cover is the sole surface covered by the green canopy per unit ground surface. Now, if the sun is right above the crop, then the shadow on the soil will give the soil surface covered by the green canopy. And you express it per unit ground surface. It varies from zero, when you have a bare soil, to 100% if you have a full canopy cover. It has many advantages to use the CC, the green canopy cover, because first of all, it is very easy to determine and secondly it also expresses the surface of the crop which receives the energy energy for transpiration for biomass production here we see a field i have no idea what is the leaf area index but just by looking at the shadows of the on the soil you can see that this is far from a 100 percent canopy of maybe something as 50 percent so the canopy cover can be easily estimated by eye. Or you can use a ruler, a graduated ruler, and see then which sections of the ruler are in the shadow and which receive sunlight. And you put it at different positions. Or of course, you can also access it from pictures, which you take right above the crop. The relationship between canopy cover and leaf area index is given by the Beer's law equation for light extinction. It uses an extinction coefficient which varies between 0.65 and 0.85. Here we see the relationship for a coefficient of 0.75. And we see that when the leaf area index is 3 or 4, that canopy cover is nearly complete. So, the green canopy development is zero at germination, as leaf area index. Then we have the canopy expansion, leaf area increases up to three or four. And then in the mid-season, the canopy cover remains constant while the leaf area index further increases. In the late season stage, we have a green canopy decline. In this section of the training module, let's have a look at the canopy development for non-limiting and water stress conditions. The canopy development for non-limiting conditions is given in the crop file. In the crop file, the user specifies the planting density, which determines the initial canopy cover. It determines as well the maximum canopy cover that can be reached. 
the maximum canopy cover is reached in the crop development stage and it's described in aqua crop with the help of a canopy growth coefficient. In the late season stage, the canopy will decline and that is described by a canopy decline coefficient. The canopy development for non-limiting conditions is hence described by the CC0, the CCX, CGC and CDC and the time to reach a development stage, time for seedling emergence, the time to the maximum canopy cover, the time to canopy senescence and the time to physiological maturity. All these are described in the crop file. We need to adjust that. The user need to tune those parameters to the variety and the environment in which the crop is growing. By expressing the time in thermal degree days, the canopy development will adjust to the thermal regime of the season. In the simulation, the canopy development will now be adjusted to water stress conditions. Water stress can hamper the canopy expansion and can even trigger early senescence. This is described by soil water stress coefficient. The soil water stress coefficient for leaf expansion grows modifies the canopy growth coefficient. As long as the water content is above the upper threshold, the green line, then there is no stress and chaos is one. When the water content drop below the green line, then we have a reduction of leaf expansion growth and finally becomes zero at the lower threshold and there is no longer an expansion. Another chaos coefficient takes care of early canopy decline. As long as the water content is above the yellow line, Ks senescence is 1 and the canopy decline coefficient is 0. There is no early canopy decline. But when the water content drops below the yellow line, early canopy decline is triggered and the crop will start to lose leaves. The threshold for the early canopy decline coefficient and for the leaf expansion coefficient are conservative crop parameters and the user has not to adjust them. In this example, we look at the development of a tomato crop in Cordoba. The crop is not irrigated and was sown on the 1st of May on a sandy loam soil. In the crop file, we can look at the crop development. That's a crop development. There is no water stress, no fertility stress, no salinity stress. So in the absence of any stress. However, when I run a simulation, then water stress might affect the canopy development. Let's run the simulation by advancing 10 days. 10 days, 20 days, 30 days and 40 days. And I can see already that water stress is building up. The water content in the root zone drops below the green line and this results in a slower canopy development than detected in the crop file. When I further advance at day 60, I have very severe water stress. The canopy expansion is completely stopped and now the water content is going even to reach the yellow threshold. The yellow threshold, which is the one for early senescence. If the water content drops below the yellow line, it will trigger early senescence and the canopy cover is declining. If I continue my simulation, I see that after 85 days, the crop has died completely. While if I look at the way the canopy should have developed, uh, 
maturity should have reached it after 130 days. However, due to water stress, the canopy development was completely different than described it in the crop file. This slide gives an overview of factors which affect the simulation of the green canopy development. First of all, there are crop-specific parameters like the canopy growth coefficient, like the uh, canopy decline coefficient, which are conservative. Secondly, we need to tune crop parameters to cultivar and to the environment. And finally, also air temperature affect the canopy development. If we express the development of canopy cover in temperature time, the simulation adjusts automatically to the thermal regime of the year. We see that water stress also affects canopy development. Water stress which affects leaf expansion and when it becomes very severe also trigger early canopy senescence. In other training modules, we will see that also soil fertility stress and soil salinity stress might affect green crop canopy development. In the last part of this module, let's have a look at the expansion of the root zone for non-limiting and water stress conditions. In this slide, the expansion of the root zone in a well-watered soil is displayed. We have a minimum effective rooting depth at sowing. It is the effective rooting depth. It is the depth from which the seedling can absorb water for its development. After a while, the maximum rooting depth will be reached. A function describes the root zone expansion curve in function of time. Now the root zone expansion and the maximum effective rooting depth, they are affected by soil physical and chemical characteristics and are described when tuning the root zone development in the crop file. In this slide we see the expansion of the root zone for water stress conditions. Water stress will affect the root zone expansion if it starts closing the stomata. As such, less CO2 can be taken up and less root mass can be developed. So a slight water stress might affect the leaf expansion but will not affect the root zone expansion. So the shoot root ratio will change. It is only when water stress starts to affect stomatal closure that the root zone expansion will slow down. And the maximum rooting depth might be less than the rooting depth which was assumed in the crop file.